Hey, yo. Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Scam Alert. If you're new here, I make all types of videos with regards to scams, whether it's scam baiting videos where I try to waste as much of a scammer's time as possible while making it entertaining for you. I also make educational videos where I try to show you how different types of scams work and what you can do to avoid them. And last but not least, I make parodies. Sometimes I do skits and sometimes I make rap songs about some of my favorite scam baiters. If you're new here and you like the information that I'm sharing, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, if you like the video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really helps with YouTube's algorithm so that we can make sure that more people get informed about the different scams. And last but not least, each one teach one. Please make sure that you share this with at least one friend or family member so that we can inform them help them get educated and teach them how to apply the information that we're teaching them so that they can know how to spot a scam, know how to avoid it, and know how to report it. That being said, let's get started. What do Jason Derulo, Kate McKinnon, Julia Roberts, Jimmy Kimmel, Taylor Swift, Justin Timberlake, Mariah Carey, Blake Lively, Sean, Puffy, Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Combs, and Anna Kendrick all have in common? They all made McAfee's number one spot for the most dangerous celebrities. McAfee explains that hackers and scammers often use these celebrities and write fake headlines and fake stories about these people to bait internet users into clicking on suspicious links, which oftentimes can lead to having malware. My suggestion to you is if you're looking for entertainment, watch Scam Baiters. There's a scam that's been around for a while, but it has a new twist. It's called the USPS slash Border Patrol scam. Basically, it's like the SSA, the Social Security Administration scam, except for the difference is that instead of finding an abandoned car on the south border of Texas with blood and drug residue registered under your name, this time the claim is that there's been a package that has been found that's under your name and it contains illegal items or things. This scam could be pretty scary for people because Right now, people are spending more time at home than ever before, and so more people are ordering stuff online. And so it's more likely that if someone hears about a package being under their name, they may actually believe it. Eventually, the scammers do as they do with the SSA scam, saying they need gift card payment or through Bitcoin. So make sure you let anyone know that if they receive a call from the United States Postal Service or the Border Patrol about a package being under their name uh, with mysterious things or illegal items in it, Make sure that they know that it's a scam. Kiboga and Joe Scambate recently put out videos on them. I'm going to link to them down below. Please make sure you go check those out. So what's the difference between phishing and spear phishing? This article on baitsecure.com explains the difference between phishing and spear phishing. What is phishing? Let's start with the funky spelling. Phishing was coined by admirers of the phone freaks, the notorious first generation of hackers who reigned during the 1960s and 70s, the phone freaks inaugurated a long tradition of cyber warfare using a hilariously simple technique, blowing a toy whistle found in Captain Crunch cereal boxes into a phone receiver to mimic a hertz tone, tricking the phone company's switching circuit into giving the phone freaks a free call. This might sound ridiculous to us today, but it was a hacking innovation at the time that exploited a vulnerability in call routing switches that relied on in-band signaling and inspired a generation of phone freaks. Phishing involves a hacking technique that is the digital equivalent of casting a net. Specifically, phishing means sending emails that are designed to lure a user into clicking on a URL that leads to a web form on a landing page that spoofs a known brand such as Microsoft. The web form is designed to harvest personal information like login credentials. Common phishing emails might say something along the lines of, your account is locked, please update your password, or please update your bank account information. In some cases, the counterfeit web forms are nearly impossible to distinguish from their real life counterparts. The URLs themselves, however, can offer a clue to what lurks beneath the surface. For instance, a phishing URL purporting to be from Bank of America might direct you to a site with the domain name www.bankofamericainc.u.co. The bank's actual domain name is www.bofa.com. Once there, you might share your login credentials, social security number, or other personal information with the criminals who set it up. 
Phishing is also commonly employed to steal login credentials to cloud applications such as Office 365. A phisher will send an email prompting a user to log into their Office 365 account to regain access to the platform, retrieve a shared file, or update their account information. The user clicks on a URL that directs to a counterfeit Microsoft webpage where their credentials are harvested, similar to the Bank of America example. What is spear phishing? Phishing in its generic form is a mass distribution exercise and involves the casting of a wide net. Phishing campaigns don't target victims individually. They're sent to hundreds, sometimes thousands of recipients. Spear phishing, in contrast, is highly targeted and targets a single individual. Hackers do this by pretending to know you. It's personal. A spear phishing attacker is after something in particular. A common scheme is business email compromise in which a cyber criminal poses as a senior employee with the power to request wire transfers to fraudulent companies, direct deposit changes, or W-2 information. To connect with you in a convincing way, the attacker may engage in social engineering to impersonate people you know, such as colleagues or business acquaintances. The attacker can accomplish this by researching you on the internet and social media or getting information about you from data breaches using peer-to-peer -peer protocols like BitTorrent. Consider the following spear phishing scenario. Your name is Bob and you work for Joe Smith, your company CEO. A spear fisher sees you on LinkedIn and notices that you're friends with Joe. He follows you on Facebook and learns about your favorite sports teams and reads about a project you're working on at the office. The attacker then creates an email account under the name joesmith21 at gmail.com. While real Joe is on vacation, information that the fisher has gleaned from Facebook, fake Joe sends you an email that says, uh, Bob. I'm on vacation, but I need a wire transfer of $100,000 to a contractor in China for a project. Please take care of it right away. Here are the wiring instructions. If you're not paying close attention, you might complete the fund transfer. This is a form of business email compromise that happens more often than you might suspect. Even people who have been trained specifically not to do this tend to get nervous when the CEO is pressuring them to do something. After all, it's Joe not some stranger, or so you think. Why do phishing and spear phishing awareness matter? Spear phishing attacks are at the heart of many of the most serious and expensive data breaches. In 2018, business email compromise cost US businesses 1.2 billion according to the FBI's 2018 internet crime report, while phishing cost US victims more than 48 million. This chart right here shows you the top 10 states by victim loss. California, Texas, Florida, North Carolina, and New York lead with over $100 million of losses. The rest are followed by Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, New Jersey, and Massachusetts. Email filters can stop large-scale phishing emails that contain known phishing URLs. Similarly, if an email contains an attachment with a known signature, a traditional email filter will catch it. However, if a phishing URL is an unknown threat or if you get a personalized email from Bob that contains no URL or attachment, they will invariably slide right through most filters. Thus, phishing and especially spear phishing comprise a dangerous but highly effective attack vector. Defense is possible, however. End user awareness and training, for example, can help users learn to spot a phishing or spear phishing email. Guys, the reason why I wanted to make sure you understood this is because a town got scammed. A town. And that's going to wrap up this episode of Scam Alert. Remember, beware of the celebrities that you're searching for online, especially Anna Kendrick. Her pitch might be perfect, but the sites that you may be going to may not be. Also remember to beware of the United States Postal Service slash Border Patrol scam. As I mentioned before, I'm including links to the video by Kiboga and Joe Scambi down below. So make sure you check those videos out for a lot more details. Also remember to beware of the phishing and spear phishing attacks that may come your way, especially if it's coming from your employer. Don't ever feel bad for giving them a call and saying, hey, I just got this email for you. I just want to confirm if it's true or not. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you like what I'm doing on the channel, please make sure to hit that like button. It helps the algorithm to expose this video to more people so that they can learn about these scams. Also, if you're new here and you like what I'm doing on the channel, please consider subscribing. And last but not least, make sure that you share this with at least one friend or a family member so that each one can teach one and we can spread the word. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Peace!